get started, right? Let's uh, look to God in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you that uh, you give us yet another opportunity to, to gather together, Lord, as uh, as your followers, Lord, as disciples of the Most High God. What an awesome privilege, Lord, to gather together, to seek your face, Lord, to look into your word, to read the eternal words, the words which are spirit and life, the life-giving words, and receive those words into our own lives and uh, speak it, to declare it, to meditate upon it. God, what an awesome privilege you've given us, Lord. Father God, we at this time, we, we just want to uh, commit each one into your mighty hands. Father God, you know um, where each one come from and uh, what we face, what we struggle, what we, Lord, rejoice with, God, and uh, you know what state of, uh, Lord, we are in emotionally, Lord, spiritually, and Lord, I just pray and declare uh, your shalom over each one of us, God. Yes, Lord, your healing, your um, deliverance, and uh, Lord, uh, um, Lord, your peace, oh God, your supernatural peace and prosperity um, over each and every person here, Father God. We pray that, uh, yeah, you called us to be declared, uh, called us to be proclaimers, the ones who declare and herald your truth, and I just pray we will do that wherever you placed us, God. And uh, we thank you that you called us to be overcomers. Master, we thank you that, uh, yeah, Father God, we thank you that uh, you called us and you make us uh, into vessels of honor or in your hands, Father God. We thank you. Even as we yield to your cleansing, even as we yield to your, uh, your work of uh, Lord sanctification, God, we uh, we pray that each and every day, God, that we'll be uh, vessels of honor in your hand. We thank you. We give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hey, so um, welcome back. Just a minute, please. Yeah. Um, so uh, last class in biblical preaching, we, um, we looked at... Uh, uh, homiletics, the, uh, um, how it's a science and an art, um, the preparation and the delivery communication of the message. Um, and we also um, uh, very briefly looked at uh, just an overview of the basics of communication, like the communication process, the barriers in communication, uh, what enables communication, what breaks down communication. Uh, and very quickly, we looked at that. And also, um, uh, lastly, we looked at the functions of language, right? what language is capable of doing and how we can use language. Like uh, we looked at um, how language can be uh, uh, you know, for interrogation, how language can be informative to pass on information, and uh, three other things. Right. So uh, today, we uh, will continue uh, with that. And uh, we look at how uh, there is uh, homiletics or we see the this there is preaching in the bible okay uh, right from the old testament right through the old testament and the new testament we see that uh, there are messages that have been uh, that have been shared right, uh, by people whom god has chosen as spokespeople so we see um, prophets coming and declaring um, what god has put in their heart uh, the words that god has put in their mouths they come and they declare and they speak it out. So in the declaration, you know, we, it's amazing just to see that uh, the infinite God puts his eternal words in the hearts and mouths of uh, finite man, like the eternal words uh, in the hearts and minds of fa finite man. And he, he invites man. Uh, when I say man, I'm, of course, talking about a human being to to declare, to proclaim his word, to carry out his purposes. You know, that's the bigger picture that, that we as his creation have the privilege of walking hand in hand with him to carry out his purposes, his uh, will on the earth. Right. So, uh, so that's the bigger picture, really. You know, when we look at uh, uh, homiletics in the Bible or, you know, how people actually declare the word, when we look at that, uh, the fact that, um, uh, okay, which page? Uh, I think we're looking at uh, chapter, um, yeah, page nine, Charles, page nine, homiletics in the Bible. Uh, yeah, so we are looking at um, 
uh, how uh, you know people people are used by God. So we see that uh, uh, God being infinite and God being um, um, this eternal God, you know, He chooses to uh, one one He chooses us to partner with Him, and secondly, He gives us of Himself really. He gives us his word, he gives us, he comes and dwells with us, uh, indwells us and empowers us to to actually go and carry out the tasks that he has for each one of us. And so uh, we fulfill uh, the purpose that he has for us, we fulfill the life that he has for us, and we live a life that is, uh, that is enriching, uh, that is uh, content, uh, uh, full of contentment and um, it's not devoid of danger. It's not devoid of uh, hardships, but uh, it is uh, the the uh, the life in the center of God's will. Right. So we we see homiletics in the Bible. We see uh, God using man to uh, declare His word, and uh, you know. Uh, but the but the beautiful thing is that even though God uses man to declare His word, it is still His word. Right. Yes, sometimes it is tainted by human personality. Sometimes it is, um, you know, the flesh comes in the way, and um, sometimes the delivery is, you know, uh, uh, in our own lives. You know, we have our limitations, but the God still, you know, God's word still is communicated and delivered. And then God's will, God's word, when it is received, still has um, bears fruit. Oh, that's the power of his word. Okay, so let's look at um, uh, some of these um, uh, instances in the Bible where we see um, homiletics being there or uh, where sermons are preached. And we see that it is, um, yes, it is on one side, it is inspirational, right? In the sense, uh, we know that um, Second Timothy um, 3 and uh, verses uh, 16, to 17 right three verses 16 to 17 let's uh, let's quickly um, just look at that scripture um, okay three verses uh, 16 to 17 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for you know he lists down a few things here for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Right? So you see that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, which means that it is God breathed. Uh, and the Greek word is there, theo pneumatos, meaning um, it is God, it literally God breathed. Uh, it's by the Spirit of God, inspired by God. And uh, and another place we see that men of God uh, wrote, no, uh, like Peter writes, right? He says, no prophecies of private uh, interpretation, but men of God wrote even as they were moved, as they were conveyed by the Holy Spirit. So, um, so we see that this is what God's word is and the ministry of God's word uh, through human vessels. It, it is God breathed, it is inspired by God, and it is used for all these things, right? So, so it involves the human element of arranging, preparing, declaring, right? So God inspires. It is in, God gives me. Give, God gives us the uh, the the message. He quickens the word for us. You know, in this dispensation, He quickens the word to us, and uh, you know, we we have the privilege of communicating it and arranging it and illustrating it and uh, and communicating in the best way possible right so we let's look at um, a few instances in uh, in the bible so we look at the prophetic writings you know the prophets we see that uh, uh, whenever they spoke um, like some of the things were very dramatic and uh, and they uh, the 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 bible scholars say that they they used homiletical um, you know methods in their communication many of the books like the psalms the proverbs we see again uh, language being used like metaphors are used uh, i'm sure you would have noticed in um, in in the book of psalms where um, uh, his love uh, endures forever you know it comes as a refrain over and over and over again
kind of and and we know these are prophetic we know that these are inspired by the spirit of god um, and uh, through the human uh, vessel it is uh, it is communicated and we see all these elements of language like metaphors are used similes are used figures of speech are used um, and it is it is communicated so we see that in the bible right um, and in proverbs proverbs also we see the same thing we see um uh, uh, i'm just trying to think of that uh, that reference where it says um well six things are an abomination no seven things are an abomination to the lord right so there is again um, a, a, a usage of language six things but then goes on to say you know six things you know seven things are an abomination it's it's a usage uh, of language to to say that okay these are this is a list of things that are, are an abomination to the lord or these are things that are too wonderful for me to understand and so on so we see that in the book of proverbs okay uh in the preaching of the lord jesus okay uh in his messages well it came with so much authority it came with so much wisdom right um proverb 6 thanks sir there are proverb 6 uh, maybe we should just look at that before we go um forward proverb 6 and uh, yeah uh proverb 6 16 to 19 these six things the lord hate, hates yes seven are, are an abomination to him you know it was just a it's a way of saying that uh, you know these are these are things uh, this is a list and uh, of course we don't use it in our culture but uh, you know the, in that time it was uh, it was a usage right these are six things seven are an abomination and and so on right so we see the lord jesus using uh, several uh, methods of uh, sharing of course he, he you know it came with the authority because he was the word himself uh, came with infinite wisdom uh, and knowledge um, and also uh, we see that it, it came with um, the lord used uh, parables everyday examples you know one of the methods that he used to to teach was through parables okay. so parables being uh, you know uh, we, we, one way of saying it uh, one way of explaining parables or defining parables is that these were these were earthly stories these were everyday accounts you know what people would see around see these were earthly stories that he used but these connected and conveyed uh, a heavenly meaning A, a deeper spiritual truth and uh, and these were stories that people could relate to because they had seen okay one day a man went out to sow mark chapter 4 we read about the parable of the uh, sower you know he went out to sow and he sowed and he sowed on different land so these were things that people could see people were uh, able to relate to and uh, people could every time i'm sure that you know after that message when they went out and they saw a land or saw a field they were reminded of this that the word of god you know and the impact of the word of god and you know what one needs to do in order to uh, you know have that 30 60 and 100 fold um uh, 100 fold harvest uh, or the benefit of the word of god in their lives right so um i'm sure they they never forgot that lesson um so if or every time they sh- saw uh, a shepherd or a um Or, or the sheep or you know every time i'm sure that they they would have thought of that or if they lost something i'm sure that they would have connected um so he used parables and uh, he he shared he preached everywhere he went okay uh, and uh, we come to um the book of acts and the book of acts also we we see a couple of uh, uh or maybe three you know um, sermons which are which are really in in settings uh, challenging settings and we see that um, you know the kind of message that was preached okay so let's look at um, that sermon uh, those sermons maybe the first one can be um, acts chapter 2 where peter is uh, uh, preaching and uh, acts chapter 2 So this starts from um verse 14 this is immediately after the outpouring of the holy spirit right there is the outpouring of the holy spirit there is a supernatural manifestation and uh, you know and people are amazed people are uh, uh, people are confused people are perplexed uh, uh, people are mocking and all these kinds of reactions and uh, uh 
in, in fact it's it's uh, you know it's right after we, the people were mocking that peter he stands up and he shares his word it is full of the holy spirit he's experienced something that he's never experienced before something supernatural and he's filled with the spirit he has just prayed out in tongues spoken out in tongues and uh, and he speaks out he stands and then raises his voice and he says in verse 14 men of judea and all who dwell in jerusalem let this be known and heed my words so you know you must you must understand that this is a fisherman right uh, yes he was outspoken yes he was uh, very impulsive and here he is filled with the spirit he is also a fisherman who is uh, who let down the lord a few times right uh, three times and uh, he's also a fisherman who um, who who uh, i mean he let let the let down the lord even after the lord warned him he said you know you you will actually deny me thrice and he did so right and he did so vehemently uh the bible records uh, and says that he went to the extent of cursing and uh, you know speaking offensive words and saying just to prove the point that you know to create a scene and say no i i don't know this man so this is the same man he's filled with the spirit he's had something supernatural and here he is quoting from the book of joel from prophet joel and he shares a message a prophetic word and he connects what has happened with what was prophesied the holy spirit bearing witness and he says you know this is what was spoken by the prophet joel uh and then he goes on um uh, verse 22 men of israel hear these words he goes on to talk about jesus jesus of nazareth a man attested by god to you by miracles wonders and signs which god did you know so much of confidence and so much of uh Uh, so much of authority then he's, he's he quotes he draws from uh, the book of psalms um and and then he um and then he comes to the con- concluding and it's interesting you can just go through it um later um at leisure now and then he goes on to end the message with an altar call right uh, how how do you want to apply this sermon he goes on to say repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit for the promise is to you and to those who are afar off as far as many as our lord our god will call and this he says in response to the question men and brethren what shall we do okay and uh, verse th- 36 is where he actually ends his message he says you know Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Right? He he starts by uh, by refuting that um, you know these are not um, these are not full of new wine. Uh, these are not the people who are drunk. And then he goes on to talk about uh, um, the prophecy uh, and uh, prophecy uh, which was declared by Prophet Joel. and then he goes on to declare about the messiah and and then when, in response to the question uh, what must we do so which that message moved them to action um, by the ho- holy work of the holy spirit in their hearts so they said you know we, we need to do something now you know, we, in their hearts it was like i've heard the truth we need to do something and then he gives the altar call and this is the move this is the call to action you've heard the word now this is what you do in response to the word right so so we see this uh, um anything else that you notice you know in this sermon um we are in acts chapter 2 and um, you know verses 14 onwards till about 36 or maybe 39 um anything else that you that you notice from this sermon like would be interesting uh, to hear right um anything else that you notice as you go through anything else that you can um, infer And when i when i just see this I, i'm like wow uh what a wonderful message and what a wonderful spontaneous message right um no notes um no preparation 
uh, the only preparation was that he was filled with the spirit of course he has been listening to the word right he walked with the word and uh, talked with the word and yeah. now um, the word whatever the word promised the living word promised he said i will send the helper and everything is just connecting now everything is making sense now yes i've experienced the helper he has come and he has moved me pushed me into another realm i've experienced the powers of you know the age to come and i can't help but you know speak and the outcomes a message connecting the old and you know the new uh really wonderful right yes um so not only um speaks with authority yeah speaks with authority using scripture um we we cannot imagine that this is the same man this is the same person who uh denied jesus right thrice yeah anything else that you notice yeah the fact that he you know drew from the old testament so which means that uh, you know they were uh studying the scriptures right they were reading the scriptures they were studying the scriptures the lord was teaching them um yeah kennedy says boldness yes boldness okay so um several other things right we can um, maybe um the fact that uh, Uh, you know he he also moved them to action he said okay this is what you need to do no holding you know no holding back anything he just proclaimed it declared it as it is and he said this is what you need to do you need to repent right it's not like uh, um yeah verse 40 says with many more scriptures meaning uh, much more than what we have read was spoken verse 40 um and with many other words he testified and exhorted them yeah saying be saved from this perverse generation then those who gladly received his word were bapt- were baptized and that day about 3000 souls were added to them yeah that's an amazing thing that we noticed again thank you avni um what do you say about hana's song and israelites song after crossing the red sea um okay so that about uh, you know Moses uh, declaring that um is that what you're referring to Charles um yeah i guess uh, you're referring to what Moses declared and uh, yeah so that's that's again you know something that we see um and uh, as a as a message uh, in song and uh, um let me just see if uh, if you have actually to put down the uh, uh uh reference here mm. yeah I, i'm not sure about the question charles like um yeah definitely it is uh, uh it is a song again a spontaneous song um which uh, was dec- was you know which was uh, uh declared uh, that is the israelites and then a uh, hana song um as she was moved by the spirit and when she received uh, you know the word so um so is your question that uh, you know are these also uh messages or all these also having homiletics in them is that your question i am trying to ask about language i am looking at the language the, that is used in both scripture mm-hmm. um referring to how the things are being spoken in the book of Pro- proverbs and i'm looking at how the languages are used they are like all that of poetic things like that i there was trying to to see when you were explaining about the language the use mm. of language and i was looking at the way the, the words are expressed hana is talking about he lifts you from the dust he puts you somewhere he does he does this he does this then when you go to the israelites crossing the red sea he has done this he has done this we are no longer seeing this 
So that's what I was trying to see whether I am understanding the usage of language in homiletics. Mm. That is yeah. the first. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you for uh, yeah, sharing that. Yeah, so the use of the language. And I think the word is, um, you know, um, the thing is to be relevant. Of course, we'll come to that a little later. Um, the use of language and also the use of, um, yeah, the, the metaphors um, and so on in order to be relevant to that culture, to be relevant to that audience. So, yeah, it, it would depend on that also. Yeah, uh, so they actually did that. They um, spoke in those ways, like the proverbs, and especially, especially you know that that kind of usage in proverbs and and in psalms as well. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll come to that uh, again when it comes to the different modes of uh, you know delivery of of the message. Um, uh, like even uh, here in India, you know, in rural uh, India, you see different. Uh, ways of uh, ways in which messages are communicated uh, to a formal congregation, you know, gathered around them in song and the whole story uh, shared in song and so on. So we'll, we'll look at that. Okay. So so we see here, um, um, you know, we, we we see this wonderful message that is uh, declared, that is spoken uh, about the Messiah. Uh, we see that in Acts chapter two. Then we move on to Acts chapter seven. Here is another. Uh, you know, another message shared by um, Stephen, preached by Stephen, and uh, the, the, you know, what really um, catches our attention is the fact that it was a very hostile uh, audience, right? It was a very hostile congregation that was um, listening to Stephen. Now, uh, we, uh, if we read about Stephen, you know, you read, uh, if you go back, uh, you see that uh, in chapter six, right, um, where the disciples are saying, the twelve are saying, you know, you need to seek out men from among you, seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business of distribution of, and added administrative task. Um, and then they say, you know, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And then we see Stephen mentioned there. Uh, verse 5, chapter 6, Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, others are listed, Philip, Prochorus, uh, Nicanor, Timon, and so on. Right. And then we uh, move down. We see that um, uh, Stephen is full of faith and power, verse 8, and he did great wonders and signs among the people. Um, they tried to dispute with Stephen, but they couldn't resist the Holy Spirit wisdom. And, uh, and, and, and really, they couldn't, uh, you know, uh, the anointing with which he spoke, they couldn't refute it. And they brought charges of blasphemy. And uh, they set up some false witnesses. They arrest him. He's standing there before the council. And they, you know, verse 15 also records that they saw his face as the face of an angel. You know, it was like uh, something very different about him, uh, even when things were so hostile. Um, then the chief, the high priest said, are these things so? You know, all these charges, all these, uh, um, all these uh, accusations. And uh, Stephen starts from there, from verse 2. And he says, uh, it starts with Abraham talks about uh, uh, how Abraham was called, talks about uh, the journey uh, of, uh, you know, the uh, uh, in Egypt, how, uh, what happened in Egypt, how the Lord uh, sustained them in famine in Egypt. Then he talks about Joseph and uh, moves on to Moses and, um, and comes down to, you know, when you read verse 44 and so on. So we see that uh, he's, uh, uh, he, he says, you know, you are stiff-necked people. And he says, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So he talks about he he, he talks about things that they already knew. And he, he preached that to them. And then he says, you know, um, verse 52, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one of whom you have now become betrayers and murderers. 
uh, who have received the law by direction of angels but have not kept it. And it says uh, they were cut to the heart. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and um, uh, and they rushed at him and he was martyred. Right? Um, but uh, what really is astonishing is that even though the, the congregation is very hostile, Right, he goes on to, you know, he's go he goes on to preach uh, this uh, amazing message, starting from Abraham all the way uh, uh, to Moses, and uh, he, he kind of um, when he finishes the scripture records that they were cut to the heart, which means that uh, it kind of um, they kind of realized they were convinced they were cut to the heart. It pierced their heart, literally. Right, um, the words they could not refute, the words they could not, um, they could not uh, in any way uh, put that aside. It actually pierced their heart. Right, so this is another sermon that we see here. And again, when we look at um, uh, Stephen's uh, sermon, he also uh, he also draws from scripture. He shares scripture, and he uh, and and he preaches. Right. Um, then we look at uh, another place where um, we go to uh, 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 where Paul is in Athens, and this is um, I think Acts chapter uh, Acts chapter fifteen or Acts chapter sorry Acts chapter sixteen. 17, rather seventeen and verse sixteen. So Paul is uh, at Athens and. Uh, he sees uh, what is around. He sees that the city is given over to uh, idols and so on. And he shares, uh, it says in um, verse 18 that uh, they, they said, you know, this is what they said. They were Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. They encountered him. And what does this babbler want to say? Others said he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. So uh, Paul was very clear. He preached to them about the Lord Jesus. He preached to them about the resurrection from the dead. Um, and then he, uh, they invite him, right? They, uh, he stands in at Mars Hill, which is Areopagus, and he, uh, he shares the word. He, he, shares the, uh, he preaches to them. And he talks to them about that altar, which has the inscription to the unknown God. He refers that. He also talks about um, um, uh, some of the, um, um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, he, 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 he talks about that. And then he uh, talks about the resurrection of the dead. And it is when they hear about the resurrection of the dead that uh, they mock, but then he has, you know, there, there, is, there are varied reactions. Some are mocking. And while others are saying, you know, we want to hear again about this matter. Um, but the fact is then here you have a curious audience and you also have, uh, you know, you have that. It's a totally different culture uh, from what uh, Paul is used to. He sees all these things. And then he actually uses uh, an object lesson in preaching. Right? He, they look at that altar. They know that there is this altar with the inscription. Uh, the place is, in fact, full of idols and altars. And uh, so he uh, he refers to that, and uh, and he says it's wonderful. You know the way he he starts. I was passing through and considered the objects of your worship. I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. Verse twenty three, and and then he goes on to share and here he talks about god who created the lord of heaven and earth um, and and so on it's wonderful you know the the, the message that he sh shares here so uh we see all these uh, sermons which are which are there and um, well the scholars say that the, there is uh, uh, well paul specifically was not uh, speaking with the or the oratorial uh, eloquence of those times, like of the the Greek philosophers, and they would they had a certain style of speaking which was highly theatrical, and and uh, Paul actually refrained from using that kind of a method. method. But also we see that um, uh, you know the, these kinds of things which he, which Paul employs in order to share the word, right? Um, then let's uh, 
if you, if you look at uh, you know his um, uh, uh, his writings to Timothy, Paul talks about character. Uh, Paul talks about the centrality of character, the foundation of character uh, in a person, in a in a person who is serving God, who wants to serve God. You know, it, it's like the qualifications, right? He says uh, the thing, but also talks about the ability to teach. Right? He says uh, able to teach, and this is one of those things. He mentions that, but um, he also, you know, uh, gives Timothy personal uh, instruction, right? and we we saw that in the other class. You know, First Timothy, so you, know, you charge some that they teach no other doctrine, um, but that they uh, that they don't give heed to fables and genealogies which are causing disputes, uh, and then he goes on to say, you rightly divide the word, right? and uh, and we give careful. Uh, careful attention to the pattern of sound words that you heard from me, knowing from whom you have received, and so on. So, uh, so uh, again, the importance of uh, you know uh, receiving the word, importance of uh, uh, rightly dividing the word, and he says you give yourself entirely, you know, uh, undeservedly to that, so that you might save yourself and those who hear you, which means that uh, saying, Timothy, this is, you know, you rightly divide the word and you rightly present the word to them. Okay, To those who are hearing you, they will also uh, uh, experience the same way that you will save yourself when you when you receive this word and you will also, uh, you know, they, they will also experience that. So, um, so the kind of, uh, 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 you know, the kind of fruitfulness that the word will bring about, he's encouraging Timothy uh, in this. So we see that in scripture, um, we see that the preparation and the presentation of the message is there, right? Some, sometimes, uh, you know, in, in, the, in some of the things that we saw, we saw that they were spontaneous, right? But the preparation, you know, was was much earlier to that particular event, right? We know we when we when we look at people, we see that okay, this is how they live their lives. They heard the word, and uh, you know they were prepared by the master, and uh, they uh, they were uh, they were filled with the spirit of God, and that itself was an education and the preparation and the training, and they God used them uh, at these times to proclaim the word. Right. And we see the same thing uh, in Paul's uh, message. And this is what we see also. So Paul, looking around, looking at the situation, looking at what is there, and looking at what people could connect to and uh, see, uh, and using that in his message. Okay, so, uh, so the thing is that, uh, you know, as God has called us to communicate the message, um, to communicate the word, so we can do this without compromising the message. Okay? Um, we can be relevant to the culture that we are in without compromising them. Because nowhere did these people compromise the message. You know, they, like Paul, he spoke about the resurrection. Uh, he spoke about the death and the resurrection of the Lord. He spoke about salvation. You know, there is no holding back. It was not about just living a good life. Right? It was not about living a life with high good morals. Um, it was about the cross. Right? Uh, it was about Jesus. And so, of course, these were all the, the ones which we see uh, are all uh, evangelistic in nature. Right? But we know that Paul's writings are also there were many teachings and uh, 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 about uh, living the life of a. Uh, of a born again person and living a life of disciple and so on. So um, many, many, um, how should we say it? You know, these were uh, messages to to live an edifying life and to live the life and also instructions to to be a minister of God. So we see messages of that nature also that Paul writes, right? Um, Paul communicates. So uh, for those of us who think, okay, um preaching is not my thing right? um the word that will be helpful for us is you know the fact that god has called us to be communicators right, of the gospel 
well, preaching, uh, you know, like we said, preaching in this kind of a, maybe a formal context, like a church, you know, pulpit. Um, well, that's a big part of it. But also, uh, you see that 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 environment is, you know, it, it keeps changing, and uh, the call of God is unique for each pe each person, and we are called to, you know, be proclaimers in in those different settings, right? Okay, so let's look at, um, you know, is preaching the question is, you know, uh, because of changing scenario, because of technology, um, you, you know, because of so many things that are shifting, uh, the question could be, you know, is preaching necessary? is community communicating the gospel in this manner is it necessary or is it relevant okay if you look at your notes um you can actually read through um this section which is in uh, on page 10 uh the case for preaching it's uh, actually uh, from a book called um, biblical preaching uh, by this person Haddon robinson um and he actually writes about uh, the case for preaching you know uh, in today's time so he, he he actually portrays a scenario where everybody is uh, it's an over communicated society that's how he starts by saying you know it's a it's an over communicated society in which um, you know if you're li living in an urban setting you go down the road and you see uh, you know hoardings billboards crying out for attention like you know buy this uh do this, live here, wear this, eat this, right? And if you're, uh, you open up your, excuse me, um, social media, and if you're on Instagram, or Facebook, or any other thing, you know, there's so much uh, that is coming your way, you know, so many messages, so many ads that is coming your way. Um, and also um, the way things are, um, like people also, you know, uh, the the credibility of people, right? Uh, very sadly, even in ministry, um, you you see gifted people, uh, and you hear the message, and you go wow, but then you hear about the life, and then you begin to doubt the message. Right? The message could be, you know, it's it's sincere, uh, it it is real, it accords with the word of God, and then uh, we see the life, and then well, it casts a shadow of doubt on the credibility of the message, right? Because of the life of the messenger. So all these things are happening. And so um, so the, it's, it's so challenging to uh, the whole aspect of preaching, right? So uh, I remember just walking, this was not in the context of preaching, but really sharing the gospel. But uh, so... Uh, walking, uh, you know, uh, doing some street evangelism. So, um, uh, in a part of Bangalore. So, going there and uh, what we used to do was uh, 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 give people a promise card. Right? It says a promise for the season, uh, or it says the reason, a, yeah, a promise for the season, and then there's a scripture there, and it just says the Bible. Right? So it could the scripture could be like, um, you know, I will be with you. you know, I will never leave you nor forsake you, uh, and and a promise from the Word of God. So. So you give, um, so we used to give them, read it out to them, say, hey, this is a promise, and uh, and from there share the gospel. You know, this is about Jesus, and Jesus cares for you, and this is what he did, and so on. So just using it um, according to uh, the need, according to the context there. But what we, what I, you know, personal experience is that people are very hesitant to take it, right? So even as you approach, um, they know that okay maybe this person is trying to sell something maybe this person is trying to uh, you know get something out of me uh, maybe wants me to sign up for some club sign up for something so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of doubt there's a lot of suspicion okay what do you want from me now right uh, do you want me to buy something do you want me to so there's a lot of suspicion uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, distrust and and on top of it, a lot of, lot of messages, a lot of communication. To, 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 so to cut through this, right, we really need uh, uh, to depend on the Holy Spirit and for the words to find their mark, right? to cut through all this. And so, uh, yeah, so Haron Robinson talks about that and talks about how um, it's an over, 
over preached society, over communicated society. And in the midst of that, you know, we have been called to preach. Okay, it, it, and especially in today, it, it is challenging. Uh, so just because the, the scenario is challenging, just because the scenario is difficult, uh, does not mean that our call to preach the gospel, our call to share the gospel, um, you know, it, it is different. Maybe we can employ different ways of doing it and be creative about it, but the call is the same, that we are called to preach, we are called to communicate the gospel, right? Okay, so let's look at a few. Um, okay, we, we're almost uh, out of time. Let's look at a few reasons here. Okay. Uh, one thing is that God is a God who speaks. Okay. God is a God who speaks. And this is how he instituted, he laid down, he spoke through the prophets, he, he spoke through his son, um, and he speaks through us. Right? He has called us, he has invited us, and commissioned us right? to, to share, to preach, to represent him, to, to be his ambassador, right? to represent the kingdom and the king. So he has called us to do this. If you look at the word of, and we looked at several examples. Um, we looked at the Old Testament. We looked at the, how the, you know, the prophets were filled with the word and asked to go and, and commissioned to uh, preach the word. We see the Lord, uh, Lord's ministry, earthly ministry. Right? There was, he went about preaching. He went about teaching. He went about demonstrating. He went about healing uh, people who were sick. Right. So there was preaching, there was teaching, there was demonstration. So we find that example in the Lord Jesus himself. John the Baptist, he came preaching, announcing about the Messiah. And uh, and he, he did that. And his method was, again, preaching, you know, reaching out, communicating um, to uh, warning people to repent. Um, the apostles, you know, when we look at the... Uh, uh, the book of Acts, when you look at the New Testament, we see, um, uh, the book of Acts specifically, we see that the apostles did exactly that. They were filled with the Spirit. The Lord Jesus told them that, you know, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. And he went on to describe that it is going to be an ever-expanding and uh, a global kind of a ministry, that you will be my witnesses. And he commissioned them. He said, go preach, go do this. Um, and he said, you will be my, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, that you will be my witness. And he talks about, you know, uh, you start from Jerusalem. Yes, you will be starting in Jerusalem, but Judea, Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts of the earth, right? It, it is going to be a global thing. And this is how I've instituted it, that you will go, that you will um, you know, communicate, preach the gospel, Okay. Uh, so we can say that God has ordained this. And Paul, uh, uh, he says, you know, woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. Okay, um, he, uh, he commissioned Timothy, or he, he charged Timothy, preach the word. Okay, do the work of an evangelist, preach the word. And we see this in the early church. We see this in uh, in the, the, the early church fathers like uh, Augustine and I, Irenaeus and, and so on. So I'm sorry, there's a, there's a, there's a typo in uh, point eight. Uh, this is page um, 12, Irenaeus. Um, so we see that uh, preaching is very much part, it has been part of the Christian faith. And uh, it is very much, um, you know, part of today. It's just that we can be and we need to be relevant. Right? We need to be relevant in the way we communicate the gospel without uh, diluting, without compromising the message. Right? Okay, so um, when we come back next class, I just want to uh, probably, uh, you know, talk about, um, before we go to the fourth chapter, talk about, you know, your scenario, right? your situation, maybe look at our own lives and see how did the gospel come to us? You know, how was it preached? And I'm sure, you know, all of us are different ages and different nations. And so it's been interesting to, to learn. Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll just be ready to, you know, share
two, three things, quick things. How did it happen? And, um, you know, how was it preached? And, uh, and how did you get to hear it? Was it something written? Was it something spoken? Was it, a, you know, something which came in the form of a song? Um, and so on. Right. So it'll be interesting for us to uh, just to hear from each other. Um, so just, you know, very briefly, right? One line, two lines, if you can just uh, point that out. Uh, probably I might ask a couple of questions after you share that. Um, so we'll do that. We'll try and see how many of us can actually share in tomorrow's class. Okay. So with that, uh, we'll end today's session. Uh, thank you so much. I think I've already taken three minutes more and you need to get back uh, to your other class. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.